planted to define yes, the uh, World Bank from the setting mm. up to today. And, and you know, uh, uh, World Bank has, has tremendously uh, contributed to Africa's growth. Yes. They have been putting in money. But we also must critique uh, the, 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 the importance and the a percentage of the growth because sometimes you, you give using, using the left hand and you take away from the right hand. And, uh, and I think that is where the problem, problem lies. Uh, for example, uh, the other day when the Americans announced that they're not going to uh, be tabling new, new proposals for loans, uh, it was shocking. And the reasons they, they gave was that our parliament approved the uh, anti-homosexual uh, laws. Two things that came to my mind. One is that, uh, well, Uganda is a sovereign country. And uh, uh, one of the issues uh, of the World Bank is strengthening sovereignty. Yeah. Now, when, when a country, uh, whether right or wrong, they sit and democratically arrive at a decision, I think as a country, even, even though you agree with what parliament did or do not agree, mm. the, the, the question of sovereignty becomes very, very powerful. Okay. As a country, we must uphold our sovereignty. Okay. And I think uh, there... We, we can't agree with the World Bank yes. of trying to push uh, an anti-democratic anti decision that if you don't do this, then we can't give you loans. Right. I, I think that, that is one. Okay. Two, um, that reasoning uh, is very contradictory because there are countries that have harsher laws on uh, LGBT, like Saudi Arabia, mm -hmm. the other day Qatar, uh, who are seeing World Cup in Qatar, you remember? Mm -hmm. Uh, the Qataris had tough things, tough issues. They were ex exposing tough decisions on, on homosexuals, even heterosexuals. That if you don't prove that you are, you are married, you can't hold, enter the same hotel room. Such, such you, you know. But the world was okay with them. Why? I, I think because they had more money. And, you know, it, it, it brings a, a class in the world. I, I think the World Bank shouldn't, if it is a, a, a bank for all of us should be the bank for the rich, right. and it should be the bank mm. for the poor. So, whereas they give us money, and we have a lot of projects, a lot of projects in our villages, water, uh, yeah. I have seen, I, I, have, I have been to Guru, uh, uh, this Guru town, most, almost all the roads are Usmid, mm. uh, you go to Mbale, all the roads are built, mm -hmm. are using, some of these are World Bank projects. So definitely, uh, the World Bank, we, we, the, the loans uh, they have been giving us are important and we, we, we really would like to go up with them. But again, in a situation where the World Bank wants to pull out, what do we do? We also must start evaluating and assessing the, the impact of their assistance. And that is where I was coming from and that is where we need as a country to, dis to discuss. Okay, for you it feels like you've already accepted um, the decision that has been made and you're putting it really on them that there's a bit of uh, inequality and equity. Uh, but but the, the thing is we have an issue here and these guys we're talking about have been funding at least half of our budget. So how does that look out for but, but let me bring in Joseph Ocheno as you come through. Uh, Mr. Ocheno, as you're giving us your opening remarks, I want you to also hint on the fact that right now the World Bank, the World Bank has put a close on, on the resources they have been giving you. And you also want to accept with me that we have been getting at least a lot of money coming from the World Bank and its uh, people or its uh, partners. What, what does this really speak to Uganda today? If we have been grappling with economic challenges and now this. Mm -hmm. Um, are you speaking to me, who happens to be UPC? Mm -hmm. And uh, just before we came on air, uh, uh, we are talking about some of the ideological foundations of our, our party and, and our role in government. Yes. I want to tell you, uh, Henry is absolutely right yes. to have given you the background mm -hmm. of the IMF and World Bank. Um, and, and primarily because these are Bretton Wood institutions uh, designed, as Henry was suggesting to you, mm. uh, to deal with a very particular project in the one way. Uh, they did great work in, re, in, uh, in seeking to rehabilitate particularly uh, post-war Germany. 
and made a net contribution to their allies in Japan. Yes. Beyond that, on the African continent, Henry, I do not actually agree that uh, um, looking back to Uganda's own history, uh, that while we have had progress and projects, there you go, typical that's, Henry. That's the old bank. No, typical Henry. <laughs>
Liberation uh, War Commander died, was killed, basically assassinated. I broke down in my house in London. I am going round and round and I'm talking about globalization, power of imperialism, slavery, colonialism, neocolonialism, and then the advent of uh, uh, the, the neoliberal agenda with uh, uh, IMF and World Bank as the expert uh, 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 performers on their behalf on economic fronts. From independence in 1962 up to 1971, overthrown by uh, imperialist apartheid back regimes in 1971. Uganda had the best economic performance. Uh, we grew as, economy, as an economy. Um, we expanded our infrastructure. We expanded our public house, housing uh, uh, across the country. This was between 1962 Basically between 1962 and 1971. That was Obote 1. Obote 1. And I think, let me re-emphasize this, you're asking me, and I know you're possibly not there yet. Yes, please. Between 1962 and 71. We expanded transport networks in this country. We expanded uh, uh, um, um, housing in terms of general infrastructure. We built hospitals equivalent to 150 hospitals today within that time period. Um, we opened up in, in terms of our, 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 our airlines. Um, we built the hotels that you know that matter, major national hotels in every major, major town as the Uganda hotels. We expanded education. We built girl child schools across the country. Built boy child schools across the country. Mm. Big institutions. Talk about Iganga. I can see something on, <laughs> on Twitter about Iganga and Basalura as we're going to be de discussing. Mm. The miserable hospital that Ener has killed in Iganga, you know, built by UPC. And the other day I passed by Chiriadongo. They look the same. Then I, you went, the other day I went to Kagadi. They look the same. Go to Nakaseki Hospital. They look the same. Go to Buholis Busoro Hospital. All built by deliberately independent, independent African nationalist driven government. Built with predominantly domestically generated resources. There was no IMF World Bank. Of course we got some money. We got some of the aid. But basically. What you want? In fact, I give you the, the, the example I like, Henry. We took the rail network from Soroti yes. to Lira to Gulu mm -hmm. to Pakwach in four and a half years, merely four and a half years. Pakwach rail bridge and, and rail and bridge was connected in 1966, June, by then Prime Minister Milton Obote. Four and a half years, we were able to extend that using predominantly our domestically generated resources plus loans and grants. I ask you today, this bunch came in 1986, January. Betty Kamir, my beautiful sister-in-law, said, and she wrote, <laughs> that was before uh, she became uh, uh, NRA, you know, you know. Betty wrote a very interesting piece in which she suggested that this about 15, 12, 15 years ago, mm. the amount of money Museveni had got as a regime between 1986 and that was about maybe the year 2004, five, you know, was more than all monies ever given to any other governments combined. And there was no sign, no, nothing to show for it. That was Betty coming, you know? Now you ask of today, where are these IMF World Bank projects? What are they? We're just starting a conversation here and power went off. Where, what are they? Granted, Henry talks about uh, Gulu. Do, do we need IMF World Bank? I'm not saying it's bad. Some of these are actually grants. Some of these exactly. are donations. There are many. Um, there's, there's a lot of aid no, there. Precisely. We're yeah. looking at just but, loans, but, but, but there are grants. But whatever the case, I'll give you context. You know, um, Ginger was our industrial city. Was it IMF World Bank? Mbale was the smartest city in East Africa. Was it World Bank? We built Iganga, Hospital, uh, Iganga uh, uh, Rail Network, completely new. The expansion, the growth of Mas uh, uh, our beautiful city, Masaka, which has been reformed in more recent times. But, you know, so <laughs> Uganda expanded and grew without many of these other things. There is no evidence except the expansion of Barara, with sometimes many part of it is stolen money. It's neither here nor there. That said, anyway, um, it was really cheeky of Mr. Museveni to go for this uh, anti-homosexuality legislation. The reason is Mr. Museveni knows 
Africa is generally conservative. Uganda is generally conservative. And he went for it optimistically. The guy did, failed to see whatever the argument, and I think uh, Henry and I were talking about this during break, that maybe, you know, they could have been different kinds of reasons. My suggestion is that I think Mr. Museveni uh, planned to play the politics of, uh, of conservatism, mm. pick on, latch on the African and say that homosexuality is a threat to you guys, and I'm your liberator, I'm your yes. savior. Exactly. That is the game Museveni was playing for political reasons. Come 2016, particularly after he lost Buganda, that gave him the base. And um, he knows that uh, uh, perhaps he needs to reclaim something from amongst Ugandans, that is, if uh, he's to become relevant in the next elections. Picked on the homosexuality thing. But I want to say one thing. So it was never about the vice itself? It, it, absolutely not about the no, vice. No, no. Because there are many kids who have been, who have fallen and, and Precisely, and I tell you today, again, just even when we're waiting for power to, our, your power to be re reorganized because it's a, your, your generator which we now, because your, your viewers need to know how much you suffer under this energy when it comes to infrastructure. You know, I was checking through my phones and um, in one Twitter account, Twitter and another on Facebook, people, there is even one where there are the people advertising, the, um, what, is it an advert? people are fundraising for a medical doctor, 37. Mm. to go for medical treatment abroad. The other day I was uh, in a funeral somewhere in northern Uganda and I was reminding Ugandans where and how, surely, fundraising for a medical doctor to go for medical treatment abroad. Mr. Museveni, for them, they just fly our national aircraft in a private jet to his family, even when they want to go and pop out children. He's a president. You know, uh, uh, he's a president. He's Obote, a president. Of all of his children, mm. I think, except uh, uh, Ben, the last born, who may or may not have, I think, born in, 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 in exile. We're born here. In Kampala. Okay. Um, our national, our national hospital. No, let me conclude this. Yes, please do. No. We are talking IMF and World Bank. Mr. Museveni has got no evidence, no proof that anything that IMF and World Bank did here. Um, can we properly trust? That said, just to conclude briefly, of course, yes, it's unfortunate <coughs> that at the end of the day, there are some projects, mm. we must see, some Ugandans are employed in these sectors, uh, um, some of these monies after they've stolen 80%, the remaining 20% lit liters down the road, so we, we, we benefit generally. <laughs> but at the yeah. end of it, particularly the monies, if they're loans and loaned projects, they're really not the biggest thing that Ugandans should technically worry about because at the end of the day, these are monies that are stolen and we, we have to pay back for it. But, but, but Mr. Cheno, mm. you, you, you're downplaying the, pro the problem in my perspective. I'm not downplaying because, the problem. Because, listen, the, our budget is 52.7 trillion, right, for mm. this particular yeah, year. Yeah. We are not funding more than 30 trillion on no, this particular no, budget. No. So it's these folks who we are downplaying who are giving us this money. Mm, no, but I, I want you to start from there. Let me first. No, no, no. But no, no, I need to say this because I, I don't want to lose this point. Please do. I, at the introduction, I gave you a very deliberate, you might yeah. think it's political, mm. and particularly for NRA guys, they will be cheeky and think it's political. Mm. I was giving you the context that we were able to grow this country, yeah. including take Museveni and all his lot to mm. schools and pay them for yeah. it. But that was around 50 years ago. Sorry for, for interrupting. And you. that's very simplistic for a journalist. The phenomenons, no, 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 are, no, no, no. The phenomenons have changed. Look, you want to agree with me. It's look, 2023. No. You, you bring me onto this program to make sense. Yes, that is actually yes. very simplistic. And you risk actually disadvantaging of, of, of your, your viewers. To suggest Maybe that... I give you no, an no, 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 perspective. No. To suggest that what we did, what this, the citizens of this country delivered from Museveni 50 years ago, and 50 years later, they cannot deliver it. You're actually abusing Africans, of course, in court. You're saying that, well, 50 years ago, our parents could do these things. And today, we are capable what, what of doing it. What, 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 an Uganda, what was the value of Uganda's shilling at the time? I hope you studied economics. Did you no, study some economics? Please answer my question. What was, the, what was Uganda's um, you know, dollar rate? Basically, what's the point? The what point are you what I'm trying to show you, but the value the we dollar had, rate the is value a, no, no, we had then, no, the, the dollar, money of the value we had then, is not the value we have today. Mm. In 2023, you want so, to agree that the dynamics have really, really changed. So what I'm saying, there may be have, may, may, there may have be some, may, there may have been some circumstances between that time that would aid Uganda 
to build such an economy, to do all that, which may have changed in 2023. So what has changed? So I, I, I really, um, maybe you, you're getting my, my, my No, I get no, I, I, I get you very well. I get you very well. What, yes. has, what, has, what has changed? A lot of things like what? by like, government what? itself. Okay. That I, means different I, ideologies have come through, different budgetings have come through. The, 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 the world has really moved on. So my, maybe by then, we did not have the importance of IMFO. The World Bank did not invest as much as it is investing today. And, and, and it's different today. Then you didn't, the then loan rate that Uganda had in 1962 cannot be the same. To be fair, then you didn't get my point. Then you didn't get my point. Maybe I did. You didn't get my point. And I don't want you to be here as a spokesperson for IMF and World Bank at the expense of an exploited Africa. I want to repeat yes, sir. that if at independence we're able to use our basically locally generated resources properly, okay, mm. Mm. and grow this country and build this country, and after 40 years, we are now a dependent economy. Okay. Yeah? To the extent, therefore, that 50% you admit yeah. of our GDP is funded externally predominantly by the Bretton Woods institutions. You know? Yeah. Then you're seeing the problem. Exactly. I think what That's what no, I'm trying to say. Okay, okay, then let me help. No, young, man, let, young, young man, let me help you. Mm. You know, it, it's really not about the dollar rate. You're trying to talk about the, if you talk about the GDP. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I think what we're trying to talk about. It's possibly, it's Mr. Museveni, exactly. maybe if you don't know, who boasts that he found a 50 billion uh, 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 Uganda economy and he's now multiplied it by 10. You've seen that, boasting like that. So that meaning our economy has grown by more than 10%, more, more than 10 times. Yes, if our economy, commonsensically, and this basic maths, it doesn't need A-level. Yeah. If our economy is expanded by more than 10%, yeah? Yes, sir. <laughs> our infrastructure should be 10% better than what? Uh, exactly. uh, ten, 10 times. We said 10 times, actually. 10 times better. You know? It means that uh, we should be providing for what we were providing that time more and better today. Exactly. The only thing that the NRA band which, is... Which is not the, only, the, okay, the reality please, please, please allow me to make this observation. Because I come to this program very deliberate. And I'm being very, very serious with you yes, here today. I come to this program because I want Ugandans to get something out of it. One of the things that Museveni says continuously is, uh, uh, or not, not Museveni, some of his, his, his sympathizers will talk about um, population growth. Population will grow by one percentage time, at most 1.6%. Mm. Economies, they boast grows up to 5%. This is the point I was referring to, Betty right. Camille. And you need, to, you need to carry out this research. Um, so um, even al allow, me, allow me first, first come to, to Mr. Luo. And, yeah. and maybe just to, to highlight on that, what I was trying to show mm. is not to downplay your, your argument, mm. but what I was trying to tell you is that, yes, by then it was a success. But when you look at 50 years from now, mm -hmm. it has deteriorated. So I'm looking Has at, China deteriorated? No, Uganda's system but, has deteriorated. But that's exactly what, my point. Exactly, that's, that's what I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. I am agreeing with you. Mm -hmm. But from a perspective of let's look at the now problem and find a, a solution for the now problem, really. Yes, we understand we were successful 50 years ago, but we are not the same Uganda we are. There are many presidents have changed. We have the discussion was not about solutions what, what, what to our problems. What, the discussions are what are our problems. Yes. All right, let me come to Mr. Anyway. <laughs> Mr. Moore, I want, I want to come through um, yes. from a perspective of mm. Uganda's parliament. And I'm, I'm sorry to bring it in parliament, because this was a, a, a legislature-led Act mm. or law. And it was the parliament led by the speaker who were at the helm of making these decisions. Mm. Do you think, as parliament and as government generally, we strategically think of the decisions we are making today, how are they going to affect? And I'm not looking at this from a perspective of just this particular law. But you realize that the parliament has always changed the constitution to, to fit certain interests that may not interest the country, but maybe a few individuals or what they interest. And many people say this particular bill, in their perspective, was brought because of someone's wanting political capital from, from the, 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 the public. So do you think we are thinking strategically as really government and the country? Um, I don't want to... Uh, to, to, to to, 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 to give the answer from the perspective mm. of whether parliament should do its work or not. Mm. Because uh, what it did is what it, it is supposed to do. Mm. Yes. Uh, whether it did wrongly or rightly, uh, parliament is supposed to pass laws. Okay? Mm. And, and for, for, for that parliament, it thought that that was priority. Maybe if we were in government, we would have done things 
uh, differently. But now it is the NRM government. Uh, for me, yes, our point of departure is the point of sovereignty. That the World Bank is trying to downplay the sovereignty of Ugandans. And for me, as a Ugandan, I thought that uh, they, they cross lines when they say that Parliament cannot do this, it should do it this way. Mm. I think that is where they, they, they go wrong. Uh, because definitely there are a lot of things that, as you say, Parliament has done that have hurt Ugandans, but World Bank has never come out to speak. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. So uh, I think uh, uh, if they haven't come out to speak on, on things that, think, that we think hurt Ugandans, then uh, this specific one, I think they have crossed the line. Mm. But <laughs> um, we should uh, look at uh, the development of Uganda in the context, in the context of, uh, uh, of the World Bank loans mm. and the contribution uh, uh, of, of World Bank to the development of Africa. Mm. And, I, I, and I think that is where my brother was coming from. Mm. We are saying that, uh, and uh, I want to put uh, figures right, the, the World Bank contributes about uh, uh, 5.2 trillion in total. Mm. Uh, for the for the past two budgets, about five between between five to five point two, mm. that's about uh, ten percent of the budget. It isn't fifty percent. Mm. So the World Bank specifically, in terms of loans and a few grants, uh, its contribution is about five point two. Mm. And if you put it in context going forward, you think that you think that that money, um, if you ask the question that, uh, as Uganda, can we go forward without that money? Mm then we would answer you differently, because definitely we would go of course we, we want And that. that is where he was coming from. Mm -hmm. He was saying that before, even without all these loans, exactly. Uganda was able to shrive and their examples to show. Mm -hmm. But now in this context, as you say, um, the loans and support of the, of the World Bank and what Uganda needs to do uh, would be to radically rupture from the bondage of the World Bank. If we have to go, to go forward, uh, the, the, there is a population and generation that thinks that uh, if you have been addicted to smoking mm. and somebody tells you that this, we have run out of, uh, of, of cigarettes, then you must blame everybody for not importing enough cigarettes and, be, and, and putting them there. But maybe if you, 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 you go back and look at the advantages and disadvantages of smoking, mm. uh, you would get more people on the, on the side that even smoking is an, even not smoking is an alternative. Mm. You can't say that uh, mm. because somebody has not put a uh, cigarettes in time, so uh, because that is the argument that because uh, people were, were uh, now we are going to lose money, now we are going to lose uh, this money is. Yes, the money is important. It is helping. But what about from the other perspective? Mm. Okay? Uh, uh, can we uh, evaluate uh, the, 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 the effects of the IMF on Africa? And I want to tell you, I've, I was reading a report about uh, uh, three months ago on uh, uh, the, the review of the structural adjustment policies. Mm. And there are three things. That one they have created massive poverty. Mm. There is evidence that structural adjustment policies have created massive, oh. expanded poverty. Mm. Two, they have created a lot of inequality. The gap between yes. uh, uh, the rich and the poor, and the poor mm. is expanding exactly. in Africa. Mm. Uh, and three, they are creating instability. They are creating extremism. You find a government uh, you, fi you find the government uh, democrati democratically elected, but because it is da dancing to the tunes of the World Bank, the population uh, uh, think that the government is not useful. So uh, they, they, there is a, pro a procession delegitimization of, of, of elected government. So now we create radical groups that keep fighting. That and, and now even here in Uganda. Uh, you find people start saying that, you know, elections are not important, we cannot, because, because of uh, one, uh, partially, of course, dictatorship, but even uh, some of these policies, which our government have embraced wholly. Mm. Actually, uh, as we blame the policies of the World Bank, we can't uh, uh, decouple them 
from uh, 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 Museven himself, because Museven uh, has been the key uh, crusader of all these policies without even review. Let me tell you, as he says, uh, and I want to put in perspective here, uh, between, between 1962, as he said, up to 1970, Uganda grew by 36%. The growth rate of Uganda, it's on record, 36%. Uh, then between uh, 1970, which uh, uh, he questions, up to 1980, the economy grew by 15%. Of course, it was on the lower side, but 15%. But since uh, 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 1986, when Museveni took over power, and it has been growing by 3, 4, 5%. The best way I'm seven, and we, we really, and all these statistics, some of them are questionable. We, you, uh, the, 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 the highest we have done is 6.5%. Now, you, you can't say that the rate of growth is very supersonic, more than we had in the, in the, in the 60s mm. or even in the 70s. Okay? Yes. So, uh, via growth, there is a very big question mark on whether uh, the World Bank and its policies have helped us to, uh, to, to, to uh, push forward yes. at the speed we want. Look at uh, um, look at some of the subs, and if you were to uh, interrogate them, one, they will tell you that privatize. When you privatize, you uh, you open up, you sell some of your your good, your uh, uh, powerful uh, command heights of the of, of the country, and uh, multinationals come, they take over, and when they when they are coming. To invest, you give them tax tax free. Uh, you allow them to, uh, to to ship out all the monies every day. There are some there are some multinationals. Everything they sell, they keep the money out. Okay, so at the end of it all, you even don't have capital to reinvest. MTN, all these multinationals, they get out of money from Ugandans. And they take it out. When you ask, what projects are there on ground? Uh, from the monies they make from you, uh, f from Ugandans, zero. Mm. Two, uh, we come, we uh, we, revol we revolutionize, uh, uh, liberalize the electricity companies, uh, UEB, UMEME. Mm. We cut them into three. There is a d d distribution. Mm. Uh, there is what, and then uh, overnight, the 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 rates for electricity skyrocket. Mm. Uh, then we continue having uh, uh, a power cut. Uh, people cannot afford. Uh, my village is in Luero. It is just about 27 kilometers from the city. Uh, we don't have electricity. We don't have access to the national grid. But even where the national grid, where people access the national grid, they cannot tap because uh, to, uh, for a person to access the national grid, he has to pay one million shillings. Now, a villager... They tell, if you want electricity, you pay one million. Now, some, some, some old man has been abandoned in the village. The young men have gone to, to, to the town to ride border border. He cannot raise the one million. Yes, sir. Because the cost... As you conclude. Yeah, because the cost of, uh, of uh, electricity has gone up. And it is a problem in Uganda. Mm. It is a problem in Kenya. It is a problem in, in Africa. The other day you had uh, issues in, uh, in, uh, in, in Niger. Uh, they, they were saying 86% of people can't have access to electricity because the uh, World Bank has advised governments that liberalize, let the private persons uh, uh, tussle it out individually. And it is very costly. So all these uh, policies, all these policies have not been uh, useful. Uh, their government, uh, the APC, uh, promoted cooperativism. When this government came and and the 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 the, 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 the with the old bank advice, mm. they killed the they cooperatives. Killed cooperatives they have uh, made credit very expensive. Mm. Okay, uh, world bank says no world bank fast. says that mm. increase the the interest rate. So uh, credit, which is the source of investment, is very expensive. So in America, America is, is in America, more harm than good. it is in America. If interest rates went up to five percent. People would demonstrate, even at 2%. And the government would fall. The government would fall. 
But here, yeah. uh, even the development loans are not less than 8%. The yeah. commercial loans that people, yeah. that people go, okay. uh, that people get are over 20%. 20 sometimes people go to, to, to the bank and they sign agreements of interest rates of over 25%. Yes, they're there. So uh, we, uh, uh, you, you, you definitely uh, see the problem that we are in. But there's what they call uh, the, the, the Stockholm Syndrome. That uh, uh, you are under captivity and you are comfortable. <laughs> you want to stick with the old bank because you think that you are. But in the real sense, you are under captivity. And 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 I think that the best the best thing as a country to do mm. is to is to decouple at this moment. All right, um, Ashur, Ashur, I have your message here, Brooke Williams Chikomeko. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be reading your messages subsequently. There is um, Bia Kuleka, Mkasa, Babi. All you guys, I'm going to be reading your messages subsequently. I'm going to start off with the submission of Mr. Alvoa of uh, maybe these world banks, these entities have done more harm or maybe they, they have bred a, a, a situation of dependency in terms of our government and African governments as a whole. But isn't it really hypo, uh, hypocritical of us to, to, to now not see their usefulness? Yet they have been giving us these loans. They've been giving us these grants that we've been used in constructing these roads. And we, and we now just... Turning ourselves, really? I know you, as a journalist, you'll ask um, a devil's advocate question because I'm going to go back to you and say, say so what is the usefulness then after Henry has made the submissions? Yeah. You know, no. Do you know, um, this topic is very emotive. Mm. This topic is extremely important. Mm. It's actually one of the most important debates, and that's yeah. why I was, I'm going hard. Mm. The point is this, <laughs> that in a way, as Henry said, um, and just like you, we have been taken for a ride as a country. What the Bretton Woods institutions have done on this continent is actually criminal. Mm. You know? What regimes like Mr. Museveni's, who are quizzling regimes, have, who pushed these people's agenda, are criminal. Mm. Um, earlier, you were, a bit, you were being a bit overzealous, so you interrupted mm. some of my flow of, uh, of, flow of debate, of, of mm. the conversation. And I was going to go on to what Henry talked about. Yes, sir. In 1980, after the fall of Idi Amin, we're now campaigning DP, UPC, uh, CP, and NRA called U UPM. I don't know where the UPM thing is these days, you know? Uh. UPC, we coined uh, a manifesto. I know manifesto is a very simple word that people use. These days, even individuals without parties say, oh, my manifesto. No, by the <laughs> manifestos are political party programs. Uh -huh. You know, if you were as a candidate uh, for an independent person, it really is not a manifesto. It's your program that you want to sell. Uh, yes. So we thought deeply, and thanks again to uh, Liberator Milton Obote, in the way back as 1978, Obote, um, as we were preparing to ensure that Kampala fell, which was going to fall, uh. Obote sent advanced teams to Uganda advanced economic teams to Uganda, Henry. I don't know whether you know that, Henry. Mm. So in Buganda, yes. in central key areas, yes. in Buganda he sent uh, the late minister, Sam Mugwisa. Mugwisa. Mm. Um, in western Uganda, I think he sent Edward Rangaranga, and I don't know who else. I think he sent two people, plus some other regions. Mm. But I'm just using those regions. So you realize this guy was saying, I corner has collapsed. Now, these are people who, who do it for this country, for God and this country rather than for themselves and their children and grandchildren dubious places, you know, and Mabati, you know. <laughs> so this guy said, our country, where we left it, we are called concerned. Um, we are going to hopefully have to reclaim this country in the next two years. Mm. What do we do? You straight away begin to think forward. So these guys went to areas where there's a massive economic activity, particularly in Buganda, mm. making economic access um, uh, assessment and then the conditions of living of the people. Livelihood, but we're done without essential commodities. So as leaders, you begin to think, when we get into government, should we get into government? What do we do? What does the country need? So they did that. So we came out with a manifest, now campaign manifest to go into elections once the body comes back and, and other political parties begin to campaign. We had a very thorough manifesto. Uh, I don't want to take heat at DP since my brother's here. Mm -hmm. But we're the only political party that had a, a manifesto, a formal manifesto in 1980, mm -hmm. by the way. Mm -hmm. you know, and in that, we already thought, of course, we had a relative advantage of government, but of course, the visionary thinking of, of our leaders at the time. So we looked through. Now, in the election manifesto, 
we, we costed program, and by the talk about other countries. In democracies, and you need to know, you, need, you went to South Africa, you need to go to the rest of the West, and I think you even need to visit China, and see how governments work, see how politics and politicians and political leaders work, see how the media works, including to hold political leaders to account, see how civil society operates, and particularly young people you know, watching us here, how they engage their governments, and particularly young, young guys. Me, I'm annoyed on your behalf. It's up to you, you know? Because whatever mess is being created here is for our children and children's exactly. children, mm -hmm. you know, particularly the younger generation. Mr. Museveni enjoyed 100% in UPC and then he's done the terrible breaking up of including Luero, you know, in the last 40 years. For him, he can retire self selfishly, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, his, uh, his son and whatever, neither here nor there. But the grandchildren, so our children. So point is, the manifesto uh, was a costed program. That we see, we did, this is what we would do, and we sold to the country. But quickly, lucky enough, we won elections. So in 1981, one of the things that we bought, uh, as the UPC was saying, there was this concern that we had radically moved to the left in the late 60s. And we said, no, we have not changed our position, we're not going to change our position, except we're going to go slightly towards the Henry's way. Henry's slightly much more of a, a conservative, market led political grouping the, Demo the Democratic Party. So we said we're going to make sure that we run a mixed um, economy where the state works in partnership with industry. We still fundamentally believe that the state should be the bigger driver of rehabilitation, reconstruction, and broader development. Even the most capitalist country on earth, meaning America, you know, the state still leads, including regulation and planning, you know. So we did that. So then apparently, Henry, in uh, 1981, we set on our 10-year pro programs. By 1984, Uganda's economy had been turned around completely. And that is notwithstanding the fact that their homes were occupied by NRA. And the NRA were throwing bombs in Kampala. Within three and a half years, we had a complete turnaround economy you know, to the extent that in 84, Uganda's standard of living rose for the first time since 1970, according to OECD figures. Now, OECD economic partners, IMF is not the panacea, you know, they came to Mitobote, apparently, and this official, uh, sorry to, I'm not wasting you guys' time. This guy said, because remember we had UPE program, said we're going to introduce UPE within 10 years. They had now opened up third world schools, the UCCs, the, the, these new colleges, UCC, technology, all of them are across the country to boost on what we had done. But you open them in second primary schools, secondary schools, as you build them over a 10-year period, rehabilitate cement industry and all this kind of stuff. Construction now a national boost. So this guy said, oh, but for you, universal primary education, you can start it by 1986, no, 87, you know, instead of by 1991, <coughs> uh, 10-year. You can do it within seven, six, seven years. What I said, no. And nobody told me personally that, Joe, I said no. So he said, I said no, because we had our own inner thinking projection that by the time you're starting UPE, this is how much our economy would have grown. Mm. This is how much our industry would have started. This is how much we'll have produced. This is how much our children, many of our children are going to school. This is how much professionals, you know, will have had. This is how much we'll have So that by 1991, when we're starting UPE, you know, we know that we, would, we could afford enough classes, teachers, scholastic materials without compromising standards, you know. But then at the same time, we were the first country also to be approached, and I think I should have started with that point, in 1981, by the, the IMF yeah, World yeah. Bank Group for a structured, structured adjustment program, followed by, by, by Ghana. Ghana accepted. We refused. Obote said, these are our costed programs. I think that's why I was trying to give you that point. Mm -hmm. These are our costed program out of the nation state. Um, if there is any way you want to help us because you sympathize with us over, over Idi Amin, yeah? Uh, you will help us. This is where we, what we can afford. This is where we think grants will be. This is where we think loans can be. But all loans will be on our terms. Young man, this will, it will be on our terms. Do you know what? We rejected SAP. As Henry says, do you know when Museveni picked up in this SAP thing? By the initially, he was opposed to these guys because he claims he's a Marxist. So 86, 87, so he bought into this thing, became their master. What does SAP do? While we had rehabilitated our industry, SAP sells all our industries, SAP sells all our banks, SAP privatizes our education, SAP privatizes our health services, health services. SAP sells all our, our, our hotels, as I was mentioning them, because I was building this. 
Sub, <laughs> sub sells everything Ugandan, young man. Sub, all the houses we built, you know, Naguru Estate, you know, uh, 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 Bugolobi, whatever. God, guess who owns those public houses in Colorado? All those that were built were sold, privatized, and now what is Uganda? I was trying to tell about a doctor who's waiting for medicine. So this IMF thing, you don't know the animal you're mm -hmm. talking about. That's basically our point. These are guys who come to loot and sack the African continent. Africa needs leadership that are visionary, deliberate. What we're saying that, look, just like uh, Obote disagreed with the Israelis in the late 60s over projects. You simply say that, well, if you're a young nation state, Henry will lead in the area of his strength. You know, yes, if you're going to build hospitals, including Loboa, you know, no, we have top Henry. He will lead. Mm. Now, if you're coming with ex expertise, this country is not going to all have a, a, a wheelbarrow pushes. So what has happened in the last 40 years is the fact that Uganda lost all the foundations that we built. And now, we're basically a sweatshop for excess capitalism. In fact, we're a dumping ground for Anglo-America. No wonder second-hand clothes or whatever else, they, they just come. So Uganda is a shopping mall. What do we produce? That is the point. And I was trying to push it to, to you, to, through to you, okay. you know, much, much earlier, very, very deliberately. So, so we should not really be this dependent nation on IMF and World Bank. But they're cheeky. They're cheeky because they gave Museveni quite a lot of money support because there was this, um, there was this almost um, psychological thing that if you're supported by IMF and World Bank, then you're accepted by the you're West. Legitimate. And, yes, and I want to tell you, a Southern African uh, uh, High Commissioner in London told me in his office that he escorted his president and finance minister to this IMF board meeting. And one of Museveni's friends, a British minister I will not name at this occasion, told him, they said, we met so-and-so in the IMF boardroom. And they said, well, if you want our help, behave like Museven. Mr. Museven, I've said this on television many times. Do you get it? Yes, I do. No. This thing is strange. But as I said finally on this, mm. I think the IMF is not doing this thing because of homosexuality. The IMF and World Bank have got their own issues. It may be Russia, you know, the new Cold War. It may be that uh, they're also tired. They, they must be embarrassed, you know. You know, supporting the you know, guy of Zoom, the Zoom for 40 years kind of stuff. And these guys are strategists. You know, they, they're, they're friends when it's convenient. Okay. So okay. Museven has already served their purposes. Maybe they're thinking in another different way. But finally, a thinking government should not have supported uh, that, uh, that, that homosexuality thing. Mm -hmm. Homosexuality, and that's what I was saying at the beginning, yeah. is not the but biggest threat. Needed. It's not the biggest threat. One, in the statutes, we already have provisions in, in, in the law to deal with um, homosexuality yeah. in a manner that would thorough. Mm. To create a new law, that's what I was trying to tell myself, was being opportunistic, uh, deliberate, mm. and actually diversionary away from Mabati and other thieving things, including the competence of Lubawa. Other than that, I Mr. Museven is not the expert on the homose homosexuals. are not the biggest risk in Kampala. The biggest risk in Kampala is bandits who are stealing in corruption, people who are stealing trillions of our shillings, mm. people who are building big things and dancing in Teso and, you know, are surrounded by poverty, eating our money, kind of stuff. Those are the threats. The people, the youngsters who graduate and they have no jobs, those are the priorities. The mm. priority is the fact that Kampala is the most polluted city on the African continent. Yes. Those are the priorities. Homosexuals, mm. we lived with them since biblical times, including this country. Mr. Museveni knows some hoax of homosexuals in this country. And as I said, before, and I'll say it on record again, NRA men raped actually men. Where are those NRA men? And they were under Museven. Right. Do you know who, where they are? And they came, and you know, their rap are 10 times much more serious. Because you were talking about people having consexual uh, sex, mm. meaning without prejudice, mm. men to men, men or women to women. By choice. By choice. But rap, even if it's of opposite sex, you kill them how many times? But in this case, you find somebody... This you know, you know, you know this, this, this strange thing that a, a man come goes to a honorable owner of a head of a host hostel. You know, how painful it is that you know yeah. you are a heterosexual and you are raped by your fellow man or your fellow woman. How many times should those people be, be killed? So how many times is Museveni going to kill those people first? He does not have the moral authority to put this thing on the table. 
But do we support so homosexuality? If, if, no. If he actually put it on the table, that means he has been burnt by his own fire. Let me, let me come to you, Mr. Luboa. And for me, is now we have accepted that this is here. Mm. How do we, what do we do as government in case it was SDP in power? How do we try to maneuver this issue? Mm. Do we do budget cuts? How do we solve this particular issue? Or how do we cope with what is now happening today? Um, yeah, of course, uh, mm. uh, there are two things. My, uh, uh, my, my, my general uh, feeling is that uh, um, we must uh, decouple from uh, the IMF systematically. That is my gut feeling. Mm -hmm. But from, from the short run, in the short run, uh, there are things that we can do. Let's one, also look at it from the long term. Because no problem, we shall read there. But, mm. but one, from, from the short run, yes, I was saying that uh, our budget, the budget con con contribution of uh, World Bank mm. is about 10%. Mm. I was reading uh, Betty Kamiya's uh, report for 2022, 2023. She was saying that uh, about 20% of, uh, yeah. of, of the budget, of Uganda's budget, is lost through corruption. Mm. Mm. So, if we ten tackle ten, twenty percent, that is mm. ten trillion. Mm. So, uh, uh, if we tackled corruption mm. very strongly, head on, then we wouldn't have these worries. Which has failed because the United state is always talking about corruption. So that is one for corruption. That is one. Two. Uh, definitely, uh, we have a lot of lavish expenditure here, mm. where you find that uh, uh, expenditure in in. Uh, in, in, in state house, uh, salaries, a uh, uh, four times or fourfold uh, the expenditure in health, mm. uh, uh, expenditure in uh, which is avoidable in public service, legislature, mm. a lot of other is, uh, is is very, very, very high compared to what we invest in education and our culture. Exactly. So definitely we must uh, also, as a country, agree on... Uh, uh, in the short run, on the priorities, uh, two, in this budget we can do some cuts uh, here and there, That's but definitely, but definitely in this budget there are, lo there, there are a lot of classified, classified expenditures uh, where government doesn't give you uh, opportunity to really know what the money is going to be spent spent on, mm. and therefore it makes it very very difficult. And moreover, in this in this country. It is where you have a lot of uh, supplementary mm. budget. Every yeah, time you come, every three months, every every mm. every, every time you, you find supplementary, yeah, supplementary supp yeah. and supplementaries really affect the original budgeting mm. uh, process. But going forward, in the in the bigger picture, there are about four or five things that I think, as a country, we can do. It is it is now very important that we sit on the round table and dialogue we, with the. Uh, 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 because uh, our country has been run on an institutionalized World Bank structure. Now, we want to move away from that structure and go back to the structure that is useful to Ugandans. Now, that requires all of us to sit on a round table as a country. We need to agree because what Museven has given us uh, is poison. And now we are saying that now that he's realizing that it is not productive to this country, can we as a country have participation? We must have at least participation as a country. We must have a, a, a vision which we agree on. How do we uh, cut costs? How do governments uh, run? Uh, I am a very, very, very strong uh, proponent of devolution. Um, it is Museveni who brought decentralization in this country. Mm -hmm. He has turned it around to centralization. Now he gives, he creates uh, districts which can't even fund themselves. So really, Cities. all these ones, uh, we must sit and talk. Two, can we see how we invest more in our culture, our culture itself, and industrialization? I agree with the, uh, 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 Museveni, Museveni is the opposite of what, uh, because the UPC had a program of cooperativism. Cooperativism is that, People agree to pull their resources together and work together. Now, Museven has been on individualism. You create 500 rich people that the, the model house, a model person can say, uh, that individualism. Uh, it is what is embedded in all these programs. Bonabaka Gawale, individual. Even this one, the, the, even Miyoga, it is individual. Even this one, the, 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 uh, the new one, it's called a PDM. 
It is the individual. He wants to see that when you get that individual and, and, and he excels, the other ones will see that it doesn't work. So uh, can we go back and see the structures that built Uganda? Uh, Africa, our culture is about cooperatives. So let's, let's, let's reinvest. Actually, I was, the, the other day, they were asking about how we can, uh, we ca we can uh, uh, sustain the issue of the LCs. And I was telling them that uh, uh, the issue of LCs as it is today is unsustainable. Mm. But we can change the roles because the problem today of Uganda are jobs and poverty. Now, if we change that system of the LC to uh, a, a bigger role, like uh, the LC becomes the primary uh, uh, cooperative group, uh, a village. Mm. A, a village is a, is a cooperative. It mm. happens in Israel and, pa and Palestine. Uh, the 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 kobuspu, the village, mm. is charged with uh, uh, organizing cooperators, and they choose their own chairman. So the chairman is chosen because uh, the chairman can organize uh, people, look market, look for market, and you know. So uh, we must also talk about how we grow our, our culture. Uh, if we are to do industries, because what what they have done. Uh, they talk about in industrialization, but we have moved away from uh, when I was a young person going to Namirango, we would uh, buy uh, ginger, uh, ginger bed, bed sheets, bed sheets made, made, made here. But what has happened is that now we have uh, uh, replaced all those factories mm. to uh, uh, small factories that make water, small factories that make, you know, things that are negligible mm -hmm. and moved away from the other industries that supported our culture. So, Industrialization, if we are to look at industrialization, it must be in terms of uh, 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 benefiting the end product for our culture, but, but even contributing to technology of imp uh, improvement of our culture. Imagine, up to now in the villages, we still use hose. Yes. We still use hose. How many use mechanized yes. agriculture? Yes. But how many oh, have tractors, really? No, it isn't about tra mm. uh, tractors. Mm. It is about our, ourselves as a country, yes. able to produce mm. or to, 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 yeah, to develop good. technology mm. that is able to support agriculture. Exactly. We are not doing it. Mm. So I think uh, that is another way to go. Um, the, the other one. Okay, you can, you can first finish the third one. Because I wanted to ask you, mm. from, many people have a perspective of now we are crossing to the east for the Eastern Bloc, uh, as our conversations with Russia, uh, Saudi Arabia, you've heard of those particular new partners that we can have for the future. Long older, shall we be going through the same phenomenon? Yeah, there, there is that one. I'll, I'll go on it last. But yes, now yes. we also have a problem of, uh, because the, the, the SAPs, the structural adjustment policies, yes. they encourage the Africans to export, to do export, but export to Europe. You'll find that uh, the... Uh, of the trade, that if, if uh, uh, tra you, Africa's trade is about, I think, 900 billion, they are about 900 billion US dollars. But 86% uh, of our trade, it is to Europe and, uh, and America. And uh, you find that trade within Africa mm. is less than 20%. Uh, 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 yes. And that is a problem, because uh, you find a lot of barriers trading in Europe. Mm. Yet, if Uganda, if Uganda or, or Kenya or Tanzania wanted to trade within us and ensure that at least 60% of the things that we need are traded between us, mm. then uh, we wouldn't have a problem. Mm. We wouldn't have a problem with, with IMF, we wouldn't have a problem with, uh, with the euro. But, but today you have to uh, have exports, uh, send things to, 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 to America, ask for Agoa, uh, send things to Switzerland, s send milk. Yet... Uh, 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 there are countries that don't have food in Africa here. Uh, the other day we had a problem. I had the Minister of Disaster was complaining that uh, 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 the, world, uh, the, the UNHCR was not allowing Ugandans to sell food to refugees. Actually, we, uh, uh, UNHCR was buying food from America, uh, a portion from America, and giving it to, to refugees. Yet we are the hosts. And we are not allowed to, to give food to refugees. So uh, if we uh, put emphasis on uh, that Africa, we are able to supply some of these things, food to our people, uh, uh, food, across, uh, build, for example, uh, Congo. Mm. Congo is, an, is um, inaccessible. 
why can't we agree with Congo and then have roads that lead to Congo such that we can open up trade with Congo? Congo is a very big market, but it is inaccessible. Why can't we ensure that there's, a, that there's security in, in southern Sudan? But Uganda continues to be a problem in the region, yet we really need uh, security in southern Sudan, we need security in Congo, we need to be working with Rwanda, such that we expand. These regional trade, trade groups mm. are more important and they bring uh, an alternative than we, we, we get when, when we trade with, uh, with, with even Russia. With, because when you, when you trade with Russia, definitely you want weapons. You, you, want, you, you want weapons. Uh, you want... Uh, uh, you don't have to. <laughs> uh, I, I am not saying that the priority is weapons. But definitely, uh, you will find that the trade within uh, Africa yes. uh, is more productive no, and sustainable enough. than the trade with mm. groups that mm. uh, really you are not at par. Mm. Uh, but lastly, yes, on, the, on the one with, the, with Russia um, and the group, they call it South-to-South -South trade. Uh, Russia, we don't take it more as a waste. Mm. Uh, but uh, th these, these countries in, in the South nearly face the same situation. We are, we are nearly captives, and we, are, we, we really understand each other. And if we encourage partnership, just like the one you're seeing, mm. uh, th there is a, a little more humane in, 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 uh, in, in understanding and, and working relationship mm. than what happens when we trade with, with Europe, mm. who see us as, as just uh, uh, people to, to, to feed on and supply them with. With, with raw materials. Mm. So I think that that is also another alternative. It is sustainable. Okay. But um, lastly, there is a debate that uh, uh, is very interesting that uh, William Ruto was advancing recently. Yes. And they have had, they call it de de dollarization. Mm. We must be uh, frank that one of the issues that is putting us on the ropes, on the ropes is to trade with the dollar in everything that we need. Mm. Scarcity of the dollar makes everything very difficult because uh, the dollar becomes very expensive. It is on demand when something demands, uh, 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 the demand goes up, yes. the prices also skyrocket. Yes. So the dollar has been scarce and we fight to get the dollar to trade. So by all means, we must cut down the, 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 the appetite. Uh, for which we, we use or we want the dollar. The dollar. Mm. If we, for example, today we are using the dollar for trade and other things at a level of 60%, if we cut it to 30%, then maybe we would run out of these problems. Kenya is already doing that, by the way. They are, they are now buying using their currency. Let me come to you. Uh, he points out very pertinent issues, and I also want you to talk about the question of the Eastern Axis, us looking there. As, as a potential solution. But also, uh, you can paint a picture for us. There are some projects that have been in the pipeline that have already been funded by, by World Bank already. What happens to, to these particular projects that are already ongoing, that many Ugandans were already looking out for, and maybe some of the solutions to fight this particular challenge? I think I read somewhere that, mm -hmm. um, and I'm not clear on this, mm -hmm. that um, some of the projects, the ongoing projects may not be affected. Yeah. I think I saw the headlines mm. to that effect. Mm. Now, that is sensible, that is reasonable, and that's possibly fair. Mm. And I think they would be doing it only to their friend, the, the friend they created to sustain. Mm. And that's not bad. And so um, um, that is that. In terms of going forward, as mm. I said, we have been promised that um, there is going to be a magic one from Rajtura uh, as an, alt an, 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 an alternative to IMF World Bank. And again, like the three of us said, before we came on air, that uh, once this, well, this conversation is coming up, starting, um, a sensible leadership ought to have known the implications, uh, whatever the merits and demerits, that uh, you think strategically that uh, uh, what is likely going to happen and what will be your options. Mm -hmm. Mr. Museven has promised us his options. I have not seen any magical option from him, even with the IMF and World Bank at hand, and sometimes even plays, he plays the prostitute in court. Uh, where he, you know, he does dance with the West and dances with the East when it's convenient. Mm. Um, but even those ones have not taken us as a country anywhere. Because if they had, I was trying to give you the, the indices for, mm. for, for the, the, the 60s and, and early part of our independence. We would be so independent nation state today that uh, we would already have gone beyond HIPIC 
and would no longer be needing aid, and even right. then right. would now begin to be asking for uh, monies, global monies, uh, on terms, meaning that, uh, you know, it would be in the interest of some of these organizations to do the, 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 the Saudi Arabia, to do some of these other countries, because they know that, well, if they don't give us money, they are the losers. At the moment, we are still the beggar, the beggar state. But finally, um, I can imagine Mr. Museveni thinking, I was, I was in Bunyoro the other day, and, um, and um, everybody else talks oil, Museveni is oil, but this is oil, so he claims. Mm. You know, so maybe they, you know, they're praying and hoping that um, <coughs> in the event that oil begins to flow over the next couple of years, they can begin to boast over oil. The problem is, you know, the things that Mr. Museveni found, which was flowing like our banks and everything else, he sunk them. It, it was, we, we can't really know whether if the oil flows, the oil will not go to, to building palaces for Mabati thieves or not. So that's neither here nor there. But on a serious note, mm -hmm. we just want to know uh, from um, Kasaija, for example, who happens to be a Munyoro, and who unfortunately, to the tragedy of this country, holds the national coffers on, on behalf of Mr. Museven on our behalf. And mm -hmm. so if these are people whom we can't trust with our little money, um, we don't know whether we can trust them with coming to tell the people that, they, that look, these are, and Mr. Museveni needs to do give, uh, this is one of the few times when he needs to address the nation and say, look, you know, we've been receiving money's ABCD tradition from so and so. I mean, uh, now, alternatively, we're thinking this way. Um, there would normally have been an address to the nation, and in the event that I was president, definitely if UPC was in government, we would already have made it very clear, in fact, a blueprint that this is an alternative thinking. But you know, Uganda is running almost by accident. That said, um, yes, you hinted to the, the East. Part of the conversation, I think, is maybe because uh, of the recent uh, way in which uh, uh, we've been talking in double Dutch mm -hmm. when it comes to the position in the NATO-Russia conflict, which is not really Russia-Ukraine-NATO-Russia conflict, and um, that if that's the case, then where is Russia on this and how much can we get from the Russia? I'm not quite sure whether Russia, any resources from Russia could be equivalent to, could replace uh, what would others get from Bretton Woods institutions, mm. particularly if it's from the loan perspective? Also have but there is, in China. but indeed, I was saying, but the, the new money is the new money is in China, the new money is in, in, in India, the new money is in Turkey, the possibly even with the margins of BRICS. BRICS at the moment, BRICS has okay. actually done in a mass, massive thing. That's why I was very concerned about economics earlier. Mm. That you see, from 1992 to 2002, 2022. Uh, BRICS economies managed to double, mm. you know, and um, the, uh, the G7, or G yeah, I think just G7 mm. managed to come from 42 to just mm. below the BRICS total. So these are nations that, that do things for themselves rather than for, <coughs> for their pockets by Madabati. So it's actually possible that as BRICS uh, keep rising and as people begin to pile down there, and even more, as BRICS begins to have a conversation of a alternative to to to, to the dollar uh, 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 economics, that is possible that uh, you know we may be able to survive away from the IMF and World Bank. And as I said, for an Ocheno president, we are an, ex an extravagant people. Uh, when you look at the way we budget. It's not really the problem no, of money, no, no, but no, no. how we spend no, this No, no, it's, it's both. But let me just conclude this and then come to your point there. Yeah. No, in principle, uh, in the event that it was an Ocheno presidency, mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure whether we would be focusing on um, the despair of the IMF and World Bank. As I said, my forefathers, our forefathers, did great stuff without being dependent on the, on this case. Mm -hmm. uh, it is possible to rejig many of these other things. Uh, but, you know, we live in an interdependent world. We are not telling anybody in Anglo America that... Um, we, we, don't, we don't enjoy their dollars and we don't enjoy their grants and we don't even enjoy sometimes some of their relief and donations and sometimes possibly even some monies in terms of loans, which would be very simplistic. We're simply saying the over-dependence on it and doing it in such a manner that well, without them it's almost as if we can't, believe, we can't live. Mm. This country is agriculturally gifted. So amid this, all this, thankfully, uh, people in Luweru will struggle, we struggle, and Mr. Museveni, you need to pay back Luweru. You know, they will struggle, struggle, but somehow the number of people in Luweru who would go hungry, not because Museveni passed there, but because God, God, God favored this country, mm -hmm. you know, relative to what would happen if it was in Turkana, or mm -hmm. perhaps even the other side near Mombasa mm -hmm. is different. Mm -hmm. So I'm still answering you 
the dynamics about the, what happens in lieu of IMF and World Bank. So those are some of the favors which are not from seven magic, mm -hmm. but really the relative mm -hmm. advantage we have now. Mm -hmm. Going forward, I think you, you're asking on um, what we'll do. Was it, what was the second part of the question? Yeah, so so yeah. right now we have a problem of extravagance. As a oh, extravagance. No, I think Henry had, yeah, indeed. Henry had uh, very ably uh, addressed that. That um, what a sensible government would do, this one is a regime, not a government, and they've never shown it, would be what you call austerity. Uh, they would uh, then, you know, if it's about austerity, mm. it would be not austerity against the, the poor, but about to begin to review, you know, and basically fiscal prudence is, is, is the word, mm. where you begin to review your, your expenses and expenditures. Museveni is a classified budget, you know, if uh, our... Uh, our, our president, if we're doing it, myself and Henry, would trim it by 70%. Mm -hmm. Trim it by 70% and the Uganda would not sink. And then as long as you trim 70% of the fiscal, of, of, the, the, of, the, um, classified. of the classified budget, you're actually able to refinance the remaining bit of the national mm -hmm. budget, number one. And then number two, uh, there is a, uh, this thing called corruption. That is this cancer, which is an endary cancer, unfortunately, that leaves with NRA. I don't see us, because let's not pretend, I don't see anything in as long as Museveni or his close associates are ruling this country. That will not change. My sister in law Betty can go to Rome and pray and come back. It won't happen. And so the answer then lies with the burden of responsibility lies with young Ugandans to add their numbers, wake up and put pressure and make sure that, well, you have a post Museveni regime a government. That is basically that. But then beyond that, there is, um, uh, beyond fiscal prudence, you basically need efficiency savings. There are some wastes, you know, I'm not even going to, the, to the, the wastes that happen in an in, inefficient and a corrupted regime, an incompetent one as such like this one's, where if you spend the money properly, um, uh, you, 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 you save as a result. So basically even some of the monies that you send to districts. My own district, Tororo, Jesus of Nazareth. Tororo, district, Tororo returned money. So basically that means, one, they lack capacity, two, they lack leadership, three, they're, <coughs> they're, they're victims of energy, they've been sucking them. They lack the vision, you know, they've been yes, yes, zombie. And for them, they, they give them the zombie, like, mm, energy, where you suck, we jump, kind of stuff. So those things happen. The process of recycling money, you know, and it's not being used, and, you know, is basically waste. So there's so many of these things that you can do in a manner in which then, uh, the more efficient you do, the more you save money. And then, of course, finally, this thing um, okay. that uh, he's talking about, decentralization. Right, finally. I'm not quite sure, mm -hmm. just if you don't mind, yes. I'm not actually quite sure whether at this material time um, we need more of decentralization and then, of course, the other problem we're talking about, you know, this um, uh, devolution. devolution. I'm not quite sure whether we can afford, under this arrangement, you're right, but in terms of long term, it will be the thing. But under, since we, he's answer, asking, mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. do we do immediately In the now? immediate term. I'm not quite no. sure whether the state can even if it's you and me, I don't think we can do so much to mm. shake the status quo, mm. except basically to squeeze and re-centralize with the, with the, with the, with the, with the, with the clear um, uh, regulatory system from center on the existing system. Um, can you radically go ahead and reduce government, for instance, half parliament? Mm. You could do that radically if you're interested, if mm. it's biting you. Museveni is not about to do that. Of course. Um, lastly, I want you to look at it from a political lens. Of Do you think such a time like this where the IMF is pull, pulling out the support for President Museveni and his government, do you think this is a ripe time for, for Ugandans maybe to, 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 to change government? I know it's a very ambiguous question, but do you think the, the atmosphere... Is, 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 is one that Ugandans or people of opposition can take advantage of? I had hinted before that one of the things that these guys may be doing is not necessarily about uh, homosexuality because as I think, as Andrew says, mm. um, uh, America's friend, you know, um, uh, Saudi Arabia, Arabia would, mm. uh, you know, have much more stringent laws and equality law legislation, mm. including on women and other things, mm. that uh, they would not be uh, uh, doing the deals together. So it's actually possible that part of the other thing is actually political. Uh, it's just been a bit disappointing to me, ironically, uh, mm. to say that I'm actually not quite sure where 
opposition leadership has been. Mm. You know, I don't know, exactly. uh, because in UPC, of course, uh, Jim McKenna is with Museveni and uh, uh, Peter Walubiri, I think we need to send the police to look for him. I, I l don't have an official office. So UPC, you can sympathize with us in that sense. Mm. But for the rest of the other political parties, um, and I don't think it's a justification for UPC. We need to be clear. Mm. I've been very clear about it. Yes. You know, for the rest of the other political parties, again, unfortunately, I don't know what uh, Hundreds got to say. Uh, uh, nobody's neither here nor there. Mm. So there. I would possibly have expected much more clear leadership from um, uh, my young brother Robert Chagulani, mm. and uh, possibly FDC as the big existing opposition parties uh, 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 to, to 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 pronounce themselves on this. They haven't. I think. We've, as opposition, we've lost and wasted opportunity on on this. Sometimes you say this, and then of course some of our colleagues don't like to be for us to have internal criticism. They say, "Oh, my, my president, my leader made a statement the other day. It's been talked about in the media." No, doing it for those of us, me and you, and who who are familiar with the media, you you, you it is imp you've done it only when it's felt, you know, across the board, you know, and a particular proportion of the citizens know what your position is. Mm. I haven't heard from them. Mm. So in that way, it's sort of a bit of a lost or wasted opportunity. Usually, anyway, in democracies in Uganda, unfortunately, not a democracy, these are so big decisions that public opinion would begin to weigh in on Mr. Museveni, mm. you know, and opposition parties would be gaining popularity. Exactly. But then again, you guys in the media don't know how often you do opinion polling. So I don't know the last time uh, opinion polls have ever been done in the conduct of this country where you say the... The, the ratings for Mr. Museveni, Robert Chagulani, uh, the ratings for their political parties, that's what they call favorability versus the other, things like that. So I think the more we do able to do these things, the more then you would be able to give you the answer. Okay. Unfortunately, Uganda at the moment is neither here nor there. And don't forget, mm -hmm. the majority of the victims who are the yeah. ordinary citizens in the countryside in Luera and Nagongara, mm -hmm. they have no clue what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Now that is the risk. It's, it's us having our conversations here. Uh, Mr. Bo, I want to, to pose that question I posed to him, the last one, that at a time like this, where the challenges are here, politics are, is, is going on, though, as he has said, the opposition has really been quiet, oddly quiet about this particular issue at a time like this one. Do you think it's high time that maybe you people who want to change government and implement the beautiful ideas you're talking about, do you think it's high time for you maybe to try out? Mm -hmm. By asking that question, you, you, you are implying that we have not tried and mm. seven is leading legitimately. Uh, but I want to tell you that we, uh, for a long time, uh, 